message down. Thanks, Alicia, um, and good morning to everybody. Uh, as Alicia mentioned, uh, our company here is uh, Story Film Photography. Uh, we we work with, with a lot of uh, clients uh, across education, and uh, we'd love to do more uh, with the independent sector because we think that a lot of the stuff we've learned working with universities and other clients uh, is is very very relevant to to you guys. Um, but I think one of the things that uh, schools definitely struggle with is, is creating that content in-house, uh, having the time, the resources. And so what I'm hoping to cover today is, is kind of like that, that minimal viable product. What's, what's the simplest way that we can be generating content on a regular basis and really uh, focusing on not those big productions that we sometimes get involved in where we'll bring our cameras, lighting, uh, sound operator and all that kind of stuff. Um, we we want to help you guys to generate content on a regular basis uh, because I think once you've got that foundation, the, the other films that you might want to produce kind of make a lot more sense. It's a lot easier to make the case within the school for using video as, as a key marketing channel. Um, so I just wanted to start with what what we think uh, video is good for and, and what it's perhaps shouldn't be used for. And I think the key differentiator between uh, video uh, against sort of uh, text, websites, prospectuses, things like that, um, would be the ability of video to move people emotionally. And obviously that's a big part of converting uh, applicants into uh into students and, and converting families to want to come and, and, and bring their children to us. Uh, and so I think we, we need to focus on, on that. So I, I guess to give an example, you might have fantastic facilities uh, at your school, but what, what difference do those facilities make? So instead of just saying we've got a fantastic swimming pool, can we hear from a student who uh, has used that pool to great effect to maybe go on and represent their country uh, or maybe something simpler like the difference that being having access to a swimming pool made to their mental health uh, some, something along those lines again if you think about the the boarding houses don't tell me how many bedrooms you've got or whether they're en suite tell me about what it is that makes it distinctive and if we can hear that from uh, a student uh, from one of the children then I think it has a lot more authenticity and we can have a lot more impact with with that type of, of content what I'm talking about is of course stories it's in the name of our company and I think the key thing to think about when we're planning our content is what's the story we're trying to tell the great thing for education is that a great story involves a hero going on a journey, experiencing some sort of transformation, hopefully meeting some strong mentors along the way and emerging at the end, a, a, a transformed character ready to sort of face their next challenges. Of course, that's, that's the synopsis of many Hollywood movies. It's also what we try and do with education, isn't it? So education as a sector is full of these kinds of stories and we just need to try and, and, and find them really. Um, but we don't need to be complicated either. You know, you can tell a story of a school across a number of smaller and simpler videos. I think the idea there is that we, we get a picture of the distinctiveness and we always talk about distinctiveness rather than unique selling points and things like that. No, no school is completely unique. Uh, no company is completely unique, but everyone is distinctive in their approach. And that's what we're trying to draw out with, with this types of content. Um, it doesn't have to be complicated. It can just be regular uh, short form content that just gives a sense of the character of, of, of the organization. So let's get technical because I know that for a lot of people, that's the bit that is kind of standing in the way of, of you doing more video content. Um, the first thing I want to talk about is, is actually sound. It's, it's widely considered uh, amongst the sort of uh, production community, if you like, at companies like ourselves that we can get away with slightly dodgy visu vis visuals um, if the camera's a little bit shaky, if the focus is just a little bit off. The viewer generally will be quite forgiving. But if the sound's off, if there's a buzz in the background, if we can't hear what's being said, then people will turn off very quickly. And unfortunately, as great as uh, smartphone cameras have become in terms of the quality of the images that they produce, uh, smartphone audio with their little um, microphones just on the bottoms of the camera, they're still there in that same spot. Um, and because of that, uh, we, we don't necessarily get 
great audio straight out of the box. But there are some great tools, inexpensive tools that can allow us to turn the smartphone into a much uh, more capable recording device using sound. Um, now, I should say that I, I've been on holiday um, until this morning. And uh, as a result, I've, I've tasked my team with uh, creating some little tutorial videos for me whilst I've been away. And uh, they kindly did that. So I've got a couple, one on uh, sound, one on lighting. So I'll, I'll share the first one now with you, which is um, our sound um, tutorial. A couple of different examples uh, and different microphones and, and the difference that they, they make. Okay, hello, I'm Jimmy. This is a quick little overview of different microphone setups. Currently, we're just using the microphone that's on the phone. And with this, you can see that I'm in a very quiet room and I'm very close to the camera to get the best sound. However, once we move to a more noisy environment, the limitations are quite clear. We've got background noise, I need to stay close to the camera and the mic picks up the wind very easily. So our first option to improve the sound is an additional microphone like this Rode Video Micro. So this microphone is an improvement, it's directional which means it records the sound from right in front of it, however you do still need to stay quite close to it in order to pick up good quality sound. The best option for this kind of shoot is to use a wireless microphone. We tend to use the Rode Wireless Go 2 and it clips very simply onto the presenter, like so. Or if you want an even cleaner, more inconspicuous look, you can use the Lavalier microphone. The great advantage of this setup is the big reduction in the background noise. Also gives you the ability to move around freely, which is very useful for, if for example, you are filming in a hall with a presenter and you might be filming at the back of the hall with a mobile phone. So guys, that was um, my business partner, Jimmy, just uh, giving you the little tutorial there. You, the first thing you'll have noticed is that we, uh, and, and I should say that we're, we're happy to share a little shopping list for you uh, guys uh, uh, in terms of things that we would recommend uh, for, for you to purchase. And there are a number of different options in terms of uh, the, the different types of uh, kit and microphones that we're talking about. But the first thing you'll have noticed is this little frame that, um, it, pretty cheap off Amazon and the and the phone actually goes in here. Um, now, the best thing about this is that it, uh, it can stabilize the camera to start with. So, you know, it makes it a lot easier to hold. You're not getting your fingers in front of the lenses and things like that. So that that's advantage number one. It's also got um, lots of these little thread mounts on here. So you can mount it to a tripod and, and that kind of thing. So it helps from that point of view. And as you will have seen in that video there, it then allows you to mount your microphone, onto there so that's our road video micro that you can put onto the uh onto the frame and get that better quality audio and then also if you need to uh, use the wireless uh, system then you take the receiver it goes onto the frame like this and then you've got the actual microphone itself to put onto the whoever it is that you're you're speaking uh, with uh, I think from uh, the, the point of view of the schools, there are probably a lot of events where people are presenting and um, sharing uh, sort of presentations or uh, awards and things like that. And being able to put a microphone on the speaker uh, and then capture the whole thing uh, is really useful from that point of view. Mark, how much are they? I think people would be interested to know yeah sure so um a, a wireless the wireless microphones i think these start at around 100 pounds uh, for like a single one we have like a dual channel version um but there there's certainly some good quality ones from not just rode but other brands that are around 100 pounds and likewise the the shotgun mic um is around 100 pounds and there are cheaper options as well which will might not be quite as good as the the sort of brand name ones but they'll definitely be a step up from the microphone that you you kind of got uh, just on, on the phone itself. You probably don't need both. I think it's about deciding what kinds of content are we going to be doing? 
Um, but you know, in terms of an investment to go with your um to to get you started making video, I think it's it's relatively low cost. These things are about twenty pounds. I once gave one away to a client um, that said, "Oh, that looks nice," and I thought, "Well, you, you take that, uh, and I'll I'll just buy another one because uh, you know they're, they're that sort of cheap." Um, and I knew then that they'd be creating even better content. So uh, I can't promise everyone one, but uh, yeah, they're they're <laughs> relatively cheap uh, and a great way to kind of just increase the the quality of the. Um, of the footage that you're creating um if anyone's got any specific questions on on anything that i'm talking about but on sound in particular if you drop them in the chat we can we can um put put you can put those to me at the end um but yeah it, i think it's very much about uh, finding out what's your specific needs are really in, in terms of the different um the the different sort of types of content that you're trying to create really okay let's move to um Let's move on to lighting. Um, so as I say, we can get away with um, not perfect lighting as long as the sound is good. But th the flip side to that is it's relatively easy to find good quality light, whether that's just about where you stand in natural daylight or by uh, bringing in a light. And uh, again, I've got a quick uh, demonstration just to show you um, some of the things um, that you can do to, to improve things. just pause the video there because I think it's quite good to be able to refer to the, the the thumbnails that we've got on the video um as as we go so uh, as you can see a lot of people uh will just use the lights that are, are available to them and th that room light um we've got the sort of the classic fluorescent tubes in this room and throughout our office it's not flattering you can see where Jimmy is stood there the light's not actually hitting his face it's it's kind of casting a shadow on his face and just spending a little bit of time to find good light will make a massive difference to the quality of the footage that you create so even just moving across to the window um will will give you a, a much uh, better quality of light and what I would say is in those situations, the best thing to do is probably turn off all the lights in the room and just use the window light. Uh, in this instance, you've got the light coming from the side uh, of Jimmy. Uh, the other option would be to actually stand almost in the window and have the light coming straight on. And it's a little bit about experimenting and just seeing what, what works best. Um, I'm actually in the room that this was filmed in now. You can see the bright blue wall and the, the softbox light uh, we actually have one permanently attached to the ceiling um, and, and providing the light that you can see on me now um, because, you know, we're, we're doing video meetings all the time and we want we want it to, to look good. So we have that light permanently attached and that provides the light that kind of sculpts the face in the same way that uh, Jimmy describes uh, in the video. But again, in, in similar to the uh, sound options that we discussed there, we're not talking about lots and lots of money. Uh, the the softbox lights, I've actually had those uh, for a, about a decade, and they um, they're just really simple, uh, big umbrellas that you put up and creates almost like window light wherever you want it. Um, then you can get battery powered ones, um, which again give you a little bit more freedom. Uh, but for the most part, if you if you're regularly doing something, say with the head of the school, then you could have that set up in the office relatively quickly uh, and and create really nice 
content, really a really nice sort of piece to camera, uh, just using one light. And it's just about experimenting with the position. Generally, 45 degrees um, uh, in all in all axes, if you like. So the, the light uh, that I've got currently is 45 degrees up and 45 degrees from my face there. And you get a, a relatively uh, flattering light, despite my lack of hair and shiny forehead. Um, my shiny forehead definitely doesn't like the overhead lights. So uh, yeah, that if you've got any follically challenged members of staff that you want to record, the the soft uh, the soft box light is 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 a must, I would say. Um, but yeah, that two very simple uh, approaches: window light or soft box light, and and away you go, really. So again, if anyone's got any um, questions on those technical bits, um, then let me know. We will happily send you some links so you know what to buy, uh, not just the stuff that we own, but stuff that we would recommend at different price points as well um, to, to give you um, some, some different options. Another bit of kit that I wanted to mention was, was this. Um, so this is our teleprompter. Uh, these things used to be really, really expensive. Uh, but thanks to uh, Steve Jobs and his iPad, um, it, it's now relatively uh, cost effective to have a an auto cue. Now, these are great. I'm sure <laughs> every everyone that's worked as a marketing manager has had that thing where they're trying to record uh, a member of staff and they probably speak beautifully until you hit record. And then as soon as you hit record, they're a gibbering mess um, that just can't get the words out. Or worse still, they've got their notes in front of them and they're and they're looking up and it, it's it's really terrible. If um, you've got um, key messages, uh, maybe introductions to the school um, or, or regular updates that you want to get done and get them done relatively quickly, um, then an auto cue is really good. You can slot the smartphone or iPad that you've already got, hopefully, into something like that. Um, the smartphone, uh, this, this one's actually designed for a professional camera, but they, they do also have versions that will work with a smartphone and that will allow you to get really nice um, sort of fluid uh, uh, dialogue without having to do loads and loads of takes. We do a lot of work um, with a local NHS client where the chief exec uh, uses this on a monthly basis and we are in and out of her office in about 15 minutes having recorded loads of content with her um, because she's seen the script ahead of time, she's had a little read through, and then when it appears on the auto queue, it's it's relatively um, easy and straightforward to do. The other thing that you can get is a, a number of apps that actually will put the words on the screen uh, of the phone, and then you use the selfie camera to 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 do the dialogue. It's not quite as good as the proper auto queue because the eye line is is a little bit off, but it's not bad. Uh, and the key to making that work is usually to get the camera a little bit further away but just because then the the difference in eye line between the text and the camera is is much smaller than it is when the camera is much closer so something to think about there um but i can imagine that if you've got regular messages that you want to get across from the the head or other members of staff having an auto cue like that can can be really really useful um so let's talk briefly about what we want to shoot and how we want to shoot an event um the the simple rule of thumb whenever we're shooting, let's say, an event uh, is to think about wide, medium and tight shots. Um, and if you kind of walk into an event, you're like, what What do I want? What, what, where do I start with this? Start with a wide, get the whole room. What's going on? Where are we? Um, get a feel for whatever event it is that's that's going on. A lot of uh, the temptation is often to start moving and panning and, and, and kind of walking with the camera, to be honest. Uh, just to start with, keep it simple, keep the camera locked off, uh, particularly if you've got it in a frame on a monopod or a tripod, that, that really helps. Once you've got that wide shot to establish where we are, get in, do some medium shots um, of, of people interacting, talking perhaps, um, and then tight shots as well, the details, if it was an awards ceremony, you know, let's have a look at some of the trophies. Uh, if it's a beautiful buffet, show me some food pictures, you know, w whatever it is that you, you feel tells the story of, of the event and close-up details can be really useful from that point of view. A lot of what we're asked to do is, is filming with people. So I talked there about the auto cue. Even with an auto cue, sometimes people don't get it all in one take. And a really useful 
uh, technique that we use all the time and that you guys could do as well is to do what we call a punch in. So um, we don't want to see jump cuts. Uh, they, they're really jarring. They're not very professional. But if we record our footage in 4K and we uh, frame it a little bit wider, probably something similar to what you can see now in terms of the framing of myself here, um, what that allows us to do in, is, is to zoom in digitally and, and punch in at the point where there's a cut. Now, you can't be punching in and out too quickly as everyone will get motion sickness. But for the odd cut here and there, if we punch in and then punch back out again in the edit, um, it works really well. It's much smoother than a jump cut. It gives you the feel that you've maybe got two cameras and, and you can kind of put those those together. Um, the alternative to covering edits is to use uh, cutaways or B-roll, as I'm sure a lot of you are aware. Um, what I would say with that is just get as much B-roll as you can, but try and make it relevant to what's being spoken about. Um, I used to do some teaching at the local college uh, as a guest lecturer, and often you'd get brought these student films where the, the cutaways would just have no relevance to what's being talked about at all. And it just it, it's one of those things that is really, really jarring. So something to to think about. Obviously, we've we've kind of rattled through quickly uh, about how to um, put uh, get good footage into the camera. Um, one thing that is a real challenge for a lot of people is then to edit it um, wherever possible. Uh, you know, if you can get things uh, that are easy to edit, you know, chop the chop the beginning and end off, and we've got a nice simple clip, then that's great. And you can do a lot of that editing on your smartphone, on your iPad, um, using the tools that are available. If you're doing something more complicated, two tools that you might want to try. Uh, Canva is, is the online tool um, that I'm sure you, you, you've heard of in terms of other templates and graphics and things like that. It's pretty good for video as well. And then another thing that you might consider is, is investing in something like Adobe Premiere Pro if you want to do plenty uh, of filming. Something that we are offering um, for a number of clients now, though, is, is that editing service because we recognize that when we compare the independent school sector to our clients over in HE, the, the, there isn't the in-house resource uh, within the independent school sector to do that editing. We can get you a long way with a couple of relatively inexpensive pieces of kit and, um, and a bit of a tutorial. We can get you creating really nice video, but then to edit it and put it together in a, in a meaningful way, that, that can be the challenge and that can be the time suck as well. You know, what we can create in a couple of hours here might take you guys a day, maybe longer to, to pull together. Uh, and so it's using uh, the experts where they can have most effect, I guess. Um, so I'd be happy to chat to anyone uh, if you feel like that might be the pain point for you guys. Happy to chat to you more about that in terms of how you can build your own in-house resource uh, or look to outsource it potentially. Uh, and we can take that footage and, and create something for you. To that end, I just wanted to show you uh, before we perhaps uh, have five minutes of questions, just an example that we've put together. It's just an exemplar for Queen Margaret, who we work with. This doesn't have that much video in, but it is a video. So this is demonstrating how using text and a lot of photography, you can still create something quite engaging and quite uh, emotive uh, just using the assets that you might already have. And it's the kind of thing that we can we could potentially put together for you.
So that's an example of what you might do if you wanted to kind of have round up a half term. Uh, we were kind of looking back at the last couple of uh, months, including obviously speech day for, for Queen Margaret's there. But as you can hopefully see, there's a really nice piece of video content that didn't actually have that much video in it. It was using a lot of um, still images. And if you can just uh, add a little bit of video, capture a little bit of video from those events, then you can put something together that's quite emotive uh, and, and quite useful, hopefully. Um, I, I'm happy to answer any more questions. Uh, I feel like I've flown through things very quickly there, um, but if anyone does have any questions, then I'm more than happy to answer. Also, if anyone wants to um, sort of have a one-to-one -one call uh, at some point, happy to book those in and we can talk about your specific uh, needs, questions, anything like that. Thank you, Matt. There, there is a question um, about what is the, um, and because I don't know its name, I can't really even say the question, but the thing that you have the phone in, what's that called if people want to buy one of those? Yeah, so this is, um, I, I'll be honest, it's so long since I bought it that I can't remember what I, uh, what, what I would have searched for on Amazon. I think you'd call it a cage. So um, a, a camera cage or smartphone cage for video uh, amazon's pretty good isn't it for, uh, for for that kind of thing in terms of their search function so yeah um highly recommend one of these it makes it, it immediately you're more stable because you've got two hands and you're kind of getting things out of the way and, and as i mentioned it's got the little uh cold shoe mounts on there that you can oh there you are well done carol good good uh, <laughs> skills on the amazon searching uh yeah that that'll um that'll make a, a great start and you can also put this onto a, a normal photography tripod um so it's it, it's a good way of, of of doing things and there's another question mark which i'll i'll let you read because it sounds quite technical for me um, let me to open even the start. chat I'll, I'll read it to you it says we shoot our content in-house and i use a canon 5d mk4 but i find it's really hard to stabilize would you recommend a camera cage instead tried using a crane gimbal but it was still rather shaky sure so uh the 5d mark IV, quite a big camera um and so i can totally understand why once you start shooting video with it it's it's um really hard i'm not sure it's uh, the 5d is quite an old camera now so i'm not sure how good it is in terms of in-camera stabilization to be honest the, the best thing you could probably do to start with is just get it on a tripod and i know that in some ways, that will make the shots a little bit more boring to start with because you, you're on a tripod all of a sudden. Um, but at least they, they won't be shaky. The alternative to that would be uh, a monopod, um, which is probably the the best sort of um, compromise between being mobile. So you quickly move from one part of a room to another with a monopod and you're not kind of taking everybody out as you move. Um, but it will give you that bit of stability because, uh, um, as I'm sure you've realized, that the 5D is quite a bulky camera uh, to be shooting with. So I, I wouldn't normally use the 5D um, handheld. It's probably even quite, you'd need a decent gimbal to, to kind of get uh, a, a steady shot with that as well. The gimbal, I should say, which is something that you might want to consider uh, if you're shooting stuff in-house, uh, is, is the sort of handle with the motors on. Uh, we've got a big one here. Um, I, I, could, I could have just been surrounded with all our kit and be pulling them out all over it. But the gimbal will give you some quite nice cinematic shots. Um, the amount of stabilisation on a, on a mobile phone, though, these days, you can get pretty steady footage if you just carefully move with it. Um, and, and another tip I would say is, um, rather than trying to be completely steady with your phone, um, if you if you aren't stabilized, it makes more sense. I'm going to stand up now. It makes more sense to actually just move kind of organically with it. So don't try it because if you try and be really sort of rigid with it, then, you know, things start shaking. And before you know it, it, it doesn't look good. But if you just kind of move organically and, and just don't try and stand completely still, that will give you better footage um, from a smartphone. Um, than you would get if you were trying to be stock still. Obviously, that doesn't apply if you were if we're on a tripod. Brilliant, thank you. Um, sounds like Maddie will be able to leave the heavy camera behind and uh, use Maybe. her iPhone. Um, yeah, yeah. I then... mean, definitely. I think there'll be times when it is worth leaving the the big camera to one side and just using your your phone for sure. Excellent, excellent. Well, I can't see any more questions coming through. So if anybody's got them, please either pop them in the chat. Ah, here we go. What iPhone would you recommend? 
Um, any iPhone, to be honest, is going to give you um, a good, good quality video, a good enough quality video, I would say. Um, if you're if you're using me to angle for a new phone on the business, then obviously the very latest <laughs> iPhone Pro Max, whatever it is now, is definitely the one you should get. Tell the head I said that and that nothing else will do. Uh, but no, any iPhone, um, I mean, this is a 13, I think it is. Uh, anything from the sort of, 10 onwards, I think, shoots shoots 4K. And likewise, on the Android side, you know, any um, recent uh, Samsung or, or uh, Google Pixel is going to give you uh, good enough uh, footage to, to use professionally, I think, as long as you, you use some of the techniques we've discussed today. Great. And we've got another question. Oh, I'm feeling so old because it's, they're all about things that I know nothing about. I use Premiere Pro to sync audio when recording with an external mic, but I have two issues. One, syncing is a slow process, even with Adobe's auto function. And two, Premiere always seems me to seem to completely change the colours of the video when I import them. Do you have any tips on helping with either of these problems? So the the changing of colours is about the way that Premiere interprets the footage. And I've had this problem myself. And I can't remember the the solution because what I did is I went to Anna, our editor, and went, Anna, help. Um, but if you drop me an email, I, I will, we can get that sorted because it's it's about what um, – it's basically Premiere thinks it needs to add a, a LUT um, to the footage, and it doesn't. Uh, the footage that comes out um, it, it is fine as it is. Um, and syncing audio, it does take time, and that's why if you're doing stuff and you want it to be – swifter i would recommend getting a microphone that you can plug straight in and then you don't need to sync the audio because it's it's there on the video track straight away the we we very rarely record separate uh audio and video because of the nature of what we're doing and, and the speed we want to work with it's great to have it there as a backup uh and, and i should say that the the road mics do have inbuilt recorders which have saved us from time to time when the audio has dropped out or whatever but Generally, um, if you can get the audio straight onto the video, that's going to speed up your process. There's no, I don't think there's any easy workarounds in that regard. Great. Um, and another question mentioning iPhones, is it okay to use an iPad in the same way with a K2 yeah, audio? Yeah, so the cameras are pretty good with the iPad as well. You do look a little bit like a grandparent when you're using an iPad for. Uh, <laughs> for filming, filming, but maybe it doesn't matter in a professional setting. But I always, whenever you see anyone taking a picture with an iPad, I always think it's like, um, it, it tends to be grandparents that have got themselves an iPad and suddenly, I know my father-in-law uh, has got an iPad and does that. But yeah, they work in exactly the same way. It's one of the great things. The, the other thing, the advantage of an iPad is that um, it's a more powerful computer. It's a bigger screen. So if you want to shoot it on the iPad and then edit it on the iPad, that's great because you can do it all on the one device. So it does have its advantages. I think you can get the cages for them as well. Um, so yeah, that, that would work. Excellent. And just a question um, from me, because I know nothing really about video. Um, you were talking about B-roll and cutaway. Um, yes. Can you just explain a little bit more what, what they are i'm assuming they're sort of bits of video that you've got a stock but it'd be quite good for us to yeah, maybe so learn more if so imagine um if you're shooting a uh, an interview say with a the head girl because she's uh just they've just won a hockey match i'm just kind of plucking things out of my head here what you would do is you'd have some footage of uh of the hockey match and that would be your b-roll so as she's talking about you know or uh, you know it was a or it was a great match and and we started off really well you would cut away to uh, some footage of the match itself just to help tell the story but the key thing is that you want the b-roll to be relevant to what's being spoken about so too often you see you know the head's talking and then suddenly we just cut to a, a random shot of the gardens and, and you're like, really that's been done just to cover the, cover the edit rather than further enhance what's being spoken about. So if it was like, we're a really welcoming uh, and, and friendly place to be, well, show me a shot of some of the kids sat around a table, having a great time, having a laugh. It, it helps enhance what's being spoken about. So that's what we're trying to do with our B roll and our cutaways. Brilliant. Thank you. Um, well, that's been really, really helpful, I think, for everybody. I know you mentioned, Mark, about the fact that you're 
um, sort of starting to work with schools and are happy to, um, if they send over to you the material, edit it and, and put together a sort of exemplar like the Queen Margaret thing. And what is the cost associated with with that? Just, I know it's how long a piece of string, but just sort of ballpark. Yeah, sure. if we've got people on the call thinking, oh, I've got loads of good video, but I just don't have the time to put it into something. Yeah, sure. So what we're what we're looking at at the moment is doing um, a, a couple of different packages for schools, depending on what you need. So the first package would be for us to come down on as a one off. We would come down and uh, spend the day with you and really get you up to speed, you know, go into detail about all the stuff we've talked about today, plan some content with you and then actually spend some time shooting some content with you, hold your hand and and get over some of the issues that you might be experiencing. Uh, and so that's 925 for the day. Uh, and hopefully off the back of that, you're, you're ready to roll and you're, and you're off and running and you can start, you know, this academic year, then you would, you'd be able to be creating your own pro, um, your own content and, and, and really getting stuff out on a regular basis. If you do need that support, then the next level up from that would be 495 a month. And that would then get you some edit resource as well as the on-site um, workshop and ongoing technical support. So what I'm imagining there is you say, oh, I've got this um, guest speaker coming in and I'd really like to capture it. What, what would you do? Where would you put the camera? What, what microphone should I use? And we can support you with all of that in that sort of pre-production bit, um, all, all easily done remotely. Um, but then you've also got that edit resource so that on a half termly basis, we can be taking your content and giving you a really um, uh, emotive highlights film that looks back on the last half term and 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 kind of gives a real sense of what you've been up to. The, the next level up from that would then see us actually coming on site for a couple of key days. And um, I think that's a much more bespoke offering, but that would allow you to have us on site for things like speech day and sports day, capture those things in their entirety. But also it's an opportunity for us to capture things like testimonials, uh, case studies, uh, and really generate a lot of content that you can use throughout the year. But it, we're trying to do it as building blocks. So it starts with that foundation of... Um, empowering you guys to be able to make your own content and then supporting you with, with whatever you need sort of going on from there.